Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Philo Notes. Previously, in our daily whiteboard edition, I discussed one of the types of compound statements, that is, conjunctive statement or proposition. And specifically, I discussed the nature and characteristic of conjunctive statements or propositions, and explained how this kind of proposition are symbolized. I also illustrated the rule in conjunction through a truth table. And now, in this edition of our daily whiteboard, I will talk about another type of compound statement, that is, disjunction. But more specifically, inclusive disjunction. And if you want to understand better and be able to distinguish the difference between a conjunctive statement and a disjunctive statement, after this video, you can actually try to search for our previous edition that is titled "Conjunctive Statements in Symbolic Logic." Or might as well subscribe to our channel for more discussions on symbolic logic. Just simply click the subscribe button below. All right, let's get started for today's edition. So, a disjunction or disjunctive statement is a compound statement or proposition that is connected by the words either or or just or. And as I discussed in the previous edition titled. Propositions in symbols in symbolic logic. The symbol for the connective either or is wedge. Now the component statements in a disjunction are called disjuncts, and basically there are two types of disjunctive statements used in symbolic logic, namely inclusive and exclusive disjunction. In this post, I will only focus on inclusive disjunction. So, an inclusive disjunction uses the connective either or, perhaps both. Consider this example: Either Jake is sleeping, or Robert is studying. Perhaps both. J R. And so, if we let J stand for Jake is sleeping, and R for Robert is studying. Then the statement either Jake is sleeping or Robert is studying, perhaps both, is symbolized as follows: either J or R. Please note that the constants J and R do not just represent Jake and Robert respectively. Rather, they represent the entire statement. Thus, J represents Jake is sleeping, while R represents Robert is studying. It must also be noted that in most cases, the phrase "perhaps both" in an inclusive disjunction is not written in the statement. Thus, in determining whether the statement is an inclusive or an exclusive disjunction. We just need to analyze the statement per se. Let's consider this example. Either Jake is sleeping or Robert is studying. As we notice, the statement does not contain the phrase "perhaps both." But if we analyze the statement, it is clear that it is an inclusive disjunction. Because it is possible for the two component statements, namely. Jake is sleeping and Robert is studying to occur at the same time. And please note that I will discuss the nature and characteristics of an exclusive disjunction in my next edition. At this point, let me discuss the rules in inclusive disjunction. So, the rules in inclusive disjunction state that first. An inclusive disjunction is true if at least one of the disjuncts is true, and second, if both disjuncts are false, then the inclusive disjunction is also false. In other words, 
The rules say that the only condition wherein the inclusive disjunction becomes false is when both disjuncts are false. This is because the connective either or directly implies that either of the disjuncts is possible. Thus, in an inclusive disjunction, we just need one disjunct to be true in order for the entire disjunctive statement to become true. Now, let me illustrate that point in a truth table. So, if P is true and Q is true, then P or Q is true. And if P is true and Q is false, then P or Q is true. And if P is false and Q is true, then P or Q is also true. And if P is false and Q is false, then P or Q is false. Now, given the rules in inclusive disjunction, how do we, for example, determine the truth value of the inclusive disjunction P or not Q? Let us suppose that the truth value of P is true and Q is false. So if P is true and Q is false, then the statement P or not Q is true. And so to illustrate that we say P is true and Q is false. Now, before we apply the rules in inclusive disjunction in the statement P or not Q, we need to simplify not Q first because the truth value false is assigned to Q and not to not Q. And if we recall our discussion on the rule in negation, we learn that the negation of false is true. So if Q is false, then not Q is true. Thus, at the end of it all, P or not Q is true. If P is true and Q is false. Alternatively, we can determine the truth value of the inclusive disjunction P or not Q in the following manner. If we assign the truth value true for P, then we can conclude right away that the inclusive disjunction is true because one of the disjuncts is already true. And if we recall, the rule in inclusive disjunction says, an inclusive disjunction is true if at least one of the disjuncts is true. All right, that's it for today. Thanks for joining me today in this edition of our daily whiteboard here at Philo Notes as we try to make the understanding of philosophy incredibly easy. Keep looking forward to our series of editions on the topic symbolic logic. And I hope you find this material helpful. And if you do, feel free to subscribe. Thanks. Take care.